today, and this as far as it takes us to do, we're going to do a series of programs that we call Hebrew Light or Light from the Hebrew. I got a question recently, and I get this question pretty often. Uh, what translation of the Bible does Billy Brim recommend? And I uh, don't have any one translation. I, I, this is my old King James Bible that I've used, you know, and I, I know it well. I've come up, grown up with the King James Bible. But I use all different translations. Uh, what really is right and absolutely right and closest is the original. For the Old Testament or Old Covenant, older covenant we might say, mm -hmm. um, it's Hebrew. For the New Covenant, it's Greek. So the original languages are where you're going to find the very depths of meanings. Uh, I always watch Rick Renner's program, and I learn a lot from his great knowledge of the Greek. Yes. It's my son Chip's dream that when we get our new sanctuary in uh, Collinsville, Oklahoma, at our church there, a glorious church fellowship, uh, he'll have a meeting, probably be a week-long meeting, with Rick teaching the Greek and me uh, stumbling around in the Hebrew. And so um, that's where your original languages yes. are. Now, as to what we have in the modern vernacular, let's say we have the English Standard Version, we have the New American. I use both of those quite mm -hmm. a lot and uh, amplified. But we have a difference. There's something called translations. Yes. And then there's something called paraphrases. And translations, the ones that I like best of the translations, mm -hmm. the translations go back to the original. They go back to that original language, and then they put it in a modern-day language. Mm -hmm. Some of them feel it should be like this, some like that. It's, for instance, if you were doing a Spanish, and you might say a big white house, or a house, a house that's big. Yeah. You know, it's just a different way of saying things. But if they go back to the translations, and I particularly like the translations that have a board or have a group of people that are looking at this translation. Now, there are uh, translations where one singular man has done it that are, you know, you get some pretty right. good things from. But a paraphrase, a paraphrase, um, they don't try to literally translate it. They just try to get the meaning of it over to you in a modern vernacular. I don't use paraphrases very much. I use them, I use translations to say, and sometimes with the original language, sometimes the ESV, English Standard Version, mm -hmm. says it better. Sometimes the New American exactly. Standard says it better mm -hmm. or gets it over to me better. So there are different ones. A New American mm -hmm. Standard I recommend, ESV I recommend, but not everything do they get right. Right. Um, so the best and, and closest is the original. Now, you've got your companion Bible mm -hmm. there. I do. Let's say you're not a Hebrew scholar or a Greek scholar. This companion Bible will give you a lot of oh, the original yes. words. So good. So um, I, I recommend that. It's the companion Bible, and the notes are by Bullinger, E.W. Bullinger. Um, I have, um, I have a, you know, a Strong's on the Hebrew and on the mm -hmm. Greek. You can look up the numbers. Yes. But I do not want to imply in any way that you have to be a scholar to understand God's Word. Exactly. You don't have to be. Mm -hmm. It's He gets over to you. He'll get it over to you through a translation here, a translation mm -hmm. there. He wants you to get it. But um, much light can be uh, on the scriptures mm -hmm. from the Hebrew. And we're calling this series Hebrew Light or Light from the Hebrew. Marilyn Hickey did a book not many, many years ago, and she called it Hebrew Honey. Oh, I love that. Where she did some mm -hmm. of the same thing with You words. know what reminds me of this study? Brother Hagin said, it's kind of like a miner panning for gold. Mm -hmm. And he can just go out on the surface and get a few little things. But if you do an in-depth study, or maybe not so in-depth, but just a little more effort in going into a word in the Word of God, you can hit a gold mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, so likewise, it, it, when you have the time and you can, encourage you to go and find the original word how it's used in the family of words and find real treasure. Real, real treasures. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to. No, you don't and have we want, to. And we don't want to. But it is there if you want. To. Now, we're going to start with uh, the Hebrew word for light itself because um, this will throw light on the scripture for us. And so this is 
I have such fun at my board. This is the Hebrew word for light. Yes. And it's Aleph Vav Resh. It is or. Or. Uh, there's a Hebrew word that you say to people in the morning, and it's Boker Tov. And it means morning good. Now, if I say Boker Tov to Shelly, Shelly, a great answer for her to give me is Boker or. Boker or. I say to you, have a good morning. And she says to me, Boker or. Meaning morning light. May the light of the morning come to you now. And the path of the righteous, it says, is like uh, the path of light from the morning light to the bright noonday light. Mm -hmm. From glory to glory we go from light to light. So here is the Hebrew word for or, light. Now, you can see that these words, which have that word or in them, bring us light. Yes. We're going to kind of emphasize here when we study light that it, there are many definitions and there are many things that we think of with light, but one is information. Yes. Enlightenment. And then darkness is ignorance. You're in the dark. Mm -hmm. You don't know where to go. You don't know right. what to do. So, or is the Hebrew word for light. And here we see the word Torah. That means the first five books of the Bible, or it can mean the entire Tanakh, all the 24 books of the Hebrew Bible. Of course, the word of God is going to bring you light. Here's a word, menorah. That is the Hebrew lampstand, the seven branch lampstand. It brought light. We're going to really see some light in that menorah yes. and what it meant. Here's a word, more, teacher, masculine. A teacher brings you light. And I am a mora. I am a female teacher. We're going to learn and see some more about a place called Alone More. We're going to study about that. Bless the Lord. So I'll leave that up there for a while and uh, go on with the first mention of the word light in the Bible. Guess where it is? Genesis. Genesis. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3, Shelley. Is yes, there? right here. On page 2. And God said, let there be light and there was light. Now, it's so interesting in the Hebrew. It actually says, yihi a or, be light. And you know what the next line is? Yihi a or. It's the same two words. Yihi a or, be light, and light bead. It's almost like he said it, exactly. and like a mirror, boom. Yeah, exactly the same words. Yihi a or, yihi a or. There's a lot in this. Oh my goodness. I recommend to you our 3BI course, Barashit. Barashit is in the beginning. And we start there right in Genesis. So much is in this word, but we don't have enough time to go to there. <gasps> all through the book of Genesis oh. and all through everything now. So we're going to suffice it to say here that God is light. And he was saying to this darkened place with all these dark waters over it, I'm going to deal with you again. Now, I teach in my book, uh, The Blood and the Glory, the, the gap between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. Yes. God created the world perfectly. At Satan's fall, it became dark. It became tovah yes. And who knows how long it lay like that. And then one day God said, the Holy Spirit was hovering mm -hmm. over it. And one day God said, ye he a or. And he he a or. He's actually saying God be. Yeah. I'm he released gonna, himself. He released himself. He is light. Read 1 John 5, 1, 5, please. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, I love your sound effects here. Dun, 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 the message. This is the message that you have to know to work with God. God is light, and in him 
is no darkness at all. God is light. So God is our light. Yes. His word is our light. Shall we read these from uh, Psalm 119 and verse 105? Noon. It's the letter noon. Yes. Uh, I'm going to come back to that and uh, I try to get you a good reference Bible close by so that I can show you where the Hebrew alphabet is in Psalm 119. You can see it easily. So this is under the Hebrew letter noon. noon. Mm -hmm. And under that Hebrew letter noon are eight verses. And Psalm 119 verse 105 is one of them. Thy word is as italicized, thy word a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Information, how to walk the life. The manual, this yes. word is your light. Yes. It's your information. Like your road map. Mm -hmm. And then Psalm 119 verse 130, the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. See, God doesn't expect you to be a scholar. No. His word is going to give you light. It's going to give understanding whatever place you are in, in growth. And Jesus was that way. Yes. He talked about sheep and grapes and yeah. fig trees. and Right. And you can understand simple. that. Yes. Now, the entrance of thy words gives light. You know what the Hebrew word is for entrance? Opening. Opening. And do you know what verse this is underneath? What letter? Hebrew letter? Yes. Hey, mm -hmm. your mouth. Mm -hmm. Opening. Opening. The opening. No, it's not. Yes. When you not look it up. Not 130. I'll bet Gimel Dollar Hey Vav Zayn. Yes. Well, I hate to prove you wrong. All right. Well, right come there. with us. Guys, you may be hey, both. Do you have, do you have a, uh, a Hebrew Bible? If you do. Not a Hebrew Bible. Excuse no. me. A good reference Bible. There you go. If you have a good reference Bible, Psalm 119 is the longest book in the Bible. And in that longest book, it's divided, it is called an alphabetically, an alphabet psalm. That's where it has the, we'd say the ABCs, the alphabet gimel dalet hey. It has the Hebrew alphabet. And each of those, it, it's divided into eight verse sequences. Mm -hmm. And each one of them begin with that letter. For instance, verse 1 through verse 8 is the word, is the letter Aleph. And then beginning with verse 9 is Bet. And then beginning with verse 17, Gimel. And verse 25, Dalit. It's kind of like the ABC chapter. Right. Now, hey, Shelley. No. Nope. Is verse 33. Uh, it can't be hey because one. No, I didn't say hey. I said pay. Oh, pay? 130. Oh, I'm sorry. Pay. I'm sorry. I thought you said hey. No, pay. Oh, oh like the there opening. you go. Pay. The opening of your mouth. And sure. The and the entrance of your word. And I think about faith is in your heart and in your mouth. That's good. And this word of faith can be in your heart and in your pay, in mm -hmm. your mouth. Mm -hmm. So he said, I, um, the entrance under pay, under mouth, the Hebrew word for mouth, the entrance of thy words giveth light. Mm -hmm. So I think it's interesting. There could be a correlation of his word in our pay, his word in our mouth as mm -hmm. we meditate, as we meditate. And opening, it opens you. Yes. His word opens you. It opens your heart. It opens your understanding. Yes, yes. But it, what do his words do? Give, Give light. light. The Hebrew word or. My favorite, one of my favorite Psalms. I have several. <laughs> Psalm 91 is a favorite, but one I really, really love is Psalm 27. Oh, Mom. And the first verse I've here. heard you quote this so mm -hmm. many I times. Do. I, it, I love it, it and you love it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah. He's your light. Yeah. So, see, we live in a kind of a dark time. Mm -hmm. uh, things are happening that never happened before. One thing you can really tell the darkness from the light. Oh, There's yes. There's a strong uh, border yes. between the two. Yes. And I think that's God's doing. 
Yeah. Because he's going to be proved justified in his judgments. And so a lot of what we see is darkness. But, and there are a lot of people afraid, Shelley, really afraid from what they've been seeing. But we're not afraid because... We have information. We, we have, have light. information and the Lord is our light. Yes. He's going to see that you get information. Absolutely. He is your light. He is your salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? And then over into the New Testament, Colossians 1.12, please, Shelley. Colossians 1.12. Giving thanks unto the Father. Hallelujah. Why? Which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Now, King James doesn't have the word the there. Oh. But it is. I put it in here. Good. This is, I, I've copied this from the King James, but it was pointed out in Bullinger. Okay. It's the light. We are in the kingdom of the light. A big difference. And he has qualified us. Our kingdom is called the kingdom of the light. That's right. There's the kingdom of the light. There's a kingdom of darkness. Yes. You need to discern if something's coming to you from the kingdom of the light or the kingdom of darkness. Let's say, for instance, you have a vision. Uh -huh. You need to judge that vision. Yes. Did it come from the kingdom of light or the kingdom of the darkness? And there's a test you can give it. You mm -hmm. confess Jesus Christ come in the flesh. So he has qualified me, and I'm supposed to thank God for it. Yeah, thank you, Lord. thanks unto the Father who has made us meet or qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. In the uh, New Testament, Shelley, uh, we see... John 8, 12, would you read that? We're supposed to walk in the light. Yes. We see the light, and then we're supposed to order our lives in the light. Yes. So read these verses. Uh, John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am El the light. I mean, oh, I like I'm glad you said it first. Mm -hmm. I am the light of the world, and he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the, the light, light of, of life. life. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walking in the light Walking of life. Walking in the light of life. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory. Uh, Ephesians 5, 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk. Walk as children, children of, of light. light. You see, walking is how we live our life. Day to day. Are I you going to do walk. the Hebrew word for no, walk? No. All right, forget not it. right now. All right. We're going to have, uh, we're going to walk in the light in this life. Yes. We walk in the light. We go onward and upward okay. in the light because we got the light right here. We're in the kingdom of light. He's the Lord of light and he gives us light and we walk in it. You're not supposed to veer off and walk in darkness. There's a scripture that says, Take heed, yes. lest your light be darkness. For if your light be darkness, how great is that darkness? That's in Matthew. So you can follow darkness. If you follow darkness in, in thinking, in um, uh, doubt, unbelief, doubt, unbelief, false doctrine, you're going to get into great darkness. But we have the light. We have the light. Uh, the Lord John is our 1, light. 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, uh, I want to show you something about um, a, a, a place, an understanding of this light. Remember, or, Torah, Menorah, Morah, Moray, teacher, Morah. Now, this one right here, alone Moray. This is in Genesis 12, 6. And um, Shelley, while I'm getting it up, would you read 12.4 through 12.6, please? Yes. And this is the New American Standard because the King James and others are going to call this the Plain of Moray, but it's something else. Yes. And I want you to point that out, please. Okay. So this is uh, Genesis chapter 12 and verse 4. So Abram went forth as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Now Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai, 
or Sari, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, and all their possessions which they had accumulated and the persons which they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan. Thus they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land as far as the site of Shechem. Or Shechem is really the way you say it. Shechem. Shechem. Most English speakers say Shechem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is verse 6 of Genesis chapter 12. Genesis 12, 6. Mm -hmm. And then it says, Abram passed through the land as far as the site of Shechem to the oak of Moreh. Now the Canaanite was then in the land. So when he, the Lord told him to leave his home of his fathers, he went down through Haran, which is in Syria, and he came down into the land of Canaan, or Canaan. And when he came there, it says he came to, King James says, the plain of Moray, but actually it says the oak of Moray. And this is the oak of Moray. This is up on a high mountain. I was told when we were sent on a prayer assignment to Israel, I was told by an Israeli there, we were told to go and pray about the elections. I got a group of people fast and we went and he said, and it looked like the liberals were going to win. And the Lord said, go to Israel and take the election. Mm -hmm. And I took just a small group of people and I told our friends there on the West Bank who owned the hotel, he said, you've got to go to the, you've got to go to the Alone Marais. You have to go to the Alone Marais. I didn't know what the Alone Marais was. And it's a tree. And this tree right here, it says, now Abram passed through the land as far as the site of Shechem to the Oak of Moray. Mm -hmm. This actually is an oak tree and it's called the Oak of Enlightenment. Ah, the, 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 the alone more, the teaching oak. And when he got to this place, then Jehovah appeared to him. And Jehovah told him, I have given you all this land. Now there's light. There's light. He took him to the top. He was near Shechem. Uh, I'll show you here how uh, you can see from this oak of Moray. You can see, um, there, whoops. Here, there's the view that I want you to see. From this place, you and I can see, I really think God caused him to see uh, with, with more enlightenment. But from this oak, and it stands there, it looks like somebody comes and waters it every single day. And here is... Uh, Nablus now, ancient Shechem. Here is the Mount of Blessing and the Mount of Cursing. And between these two mountains and in this valley is Nablus or Shechem. And from this high mountain, you can see down there. Yes. And from this place, God said to him, Jehovah appeared, this is in the seventh verse, and said to your descendants, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to Jehovah who appeared to him. Jehovah appeared, right. not an angel no. going up and down ladders. Jehovah appeared and he gave him the light that I'm giving you and all your descendants. He finally got to the place. He'd been waiting to see if he got to the place. Yes. And he comes to the place and he's up at the Alone Marais, mm. Mm, up mm, at that mm. Oak of Learning. Yes. They'll show some more pictures of it there for you to see. Mm -hmm. He's up there and Jehovah says, to your descendants, I will give this land. Already the Lord had told him about a land he would go to, mm -hmm. but he doesn't know where it is. And he gets there and he goes to the Alone Marais, the Oak of Enlightenment, and he gets the enlightening that this is the promised land God brought him to. Period. Period. So we're going to go the next time onto some light thrown on special words in the Bible that will just help you. One word that it will just increase your understanding in the Hebrew to see what it really means is the word shalom. And this is my mini book, which goes into quite a bit of detail about it. And we will get to this in a later lesson, but we're offering to you seven of my many books for $15 and we will pay the shipping. $15, we pay the shipping for seven of them. And I have uh, 
oh, Jerusalem above and below, God's promises of the land of Israel to Abraham, uh, the judgment of the nations, the hearing heart, the authority of the believer, and how to rightly divide the word. So that's seven of my many books. And you know, uh, there's a lot packed into these many books. You really could have made one of them a bigger book. But we were wanting something that you could put in your purse, your, your pocket, and something that you might think, I can read that. You know, when your father died, he went to heaven, 1986, and I prayed, Lord, what do I do? And he said, I want you to study Hebrew in the land. And so I found out the very best Hebrew upon and went to it. And I'm no scholar, Shelley, but a little light, a light from the Hebrew came to me, and it will come to you. Shalom. <laughs>